Welcome to iExambi's Legal Bee. This is Amrita, your law faculty here at iExambi. In this video today, I am going to discuss with you all the five important judgments from the topic of offenses against property from Indian Penal Code. We have started this series at Legal Bee exclusively for those who are preparing for Central Bureau of Investigation APP examination that is CBI APP law exam. इस एग्जाम के लिए जो लोग प्रिपेयर कर रहे हैं उनके लिए जजमेंट्स पढ़ना भी काफी इंपॉर्टेंट है सो आई हैव टेकन अप दिस सीरीज इन विच आई एम डिस्कसिंग फाइव इंपॉर्टेंट जजमेंट्स फ्रॉम ईच टॉपिक ऑफ आईपीसी ऑफ कोर्स व्हिच इज एन इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक ऑफ आईपीसी आज का टॉपिक भी काफी इंपॉर्टेंट है अगर आपने अभी तक चैनल को सब्सक्राइब नहीं किया है डेफिनेटली यू शुड गो एंड इमीडिएटली चैनल को आप सब्सक्राइब कर लें एंड ऑल्सो इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेरीज यू कैन रीच आउट टू अस ऑन हेलो एट द रेट एग्जाम बी डॉट कॉम कॉल अस ऑन नाइन टू जीरो डबल फाइव टू फोर जीरो टू एट और विजिट आर वेबसाइट डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट आई एग्जाम डॉट कॉम फॉर मोर डिटेल्स ऑफ दिस कोर्स एज वेल लेट एस स्टार्ट विद आर डिस्कशन द फर्स्ट जजमेंट इज दिवान सिंह वर्स स्टेट ऑफ मध्य प्रदेश The court has held about Section 382 of IPC. It was necessary. It was not necessary that hurt must be caused or an attempt to cause hurt must be made. If a person who kept a knife with him and committed theft, and then he is liable to be convicted under Section 382, even if he had no occasion to wield the knife or cause any injury. even if he did not get the occasion to wield the knife and cause any injury then also he can be convicted under section 382 of ipc that has been discussed in this particular judgment so this we have to understand the scope of section 382 of ipc is being discussed over here that is relating to theft after preparation made for causing death hurt or restraint in order to the committing of the theft so if you have prepared yourself for making any such kind of activity that can lead to death hurt even if you have not made an attempt but you have a knife with you that will amount to preparation what is relevant in the preparedness of the accused in such a manner that he may be able to cause hurt to others who might resist or may come in his way of escaping or taking the stolen property away so this is a very important judgment to understand the scope of section 382 of ipc a very important area from ipc of course theft and its aggravated forms next judgment is om prakash versus state of rajasthan 1998 this is also a landmark one in this case the supreme court had ruled that where the charge of dacoity is against five named persons and out of them two were acquitted the remaining three cannot be convicted for dacoity this is a very important point which you have to remember about dacoity that if suppose five people are that obviously for dacoity offense we need five out of this if we have acquitted two how we can charge the other three people for dacoity that is actually not possible but then at the time when they were charged they were five in number so the offense of dacoity was um, made applicable and they were charged with it but then if there is acquittal of two then what about the remaining three so this question was settled by the supreme court in this case that they cannot be convicted for the offense of dacoity Kalika Tiwari versus State of Bihar 1997 in this case the accused formed a group and committed dacoity dacoity is a very uh, famous offense basically and also an aggravated one no doubt even preparation for committing dacoity is therefore made punishable so ye important area hai yahan se maine isliye judgments liye hain theft dacoity ye sare important areas hai offenses against property the accused formed a group and committed dacoity one of them murdered an inmate so the trial court punished all the members of dacoity the high court punished only the person who committed murder and acquitted the remaining members so this is what is the version of trial court trial court punished all of them for dacoity and what did high court do high court punished only the persons who committed murder and acquitted the remaining members yani ki se murder jisne kiya tha डेकोइटी वाले ग्रुप में से सिर्फ उसी को पनिश किया गया 
so in this this case the supreme court held that high court had erred in acquitting the remaining members over here it held that under section 396 when we read it with section 302 32 and 149 of ipc if a member of an unlawful assembly murders all the murders of that unlawful assembly or all the members sorry not murders all the members of that unlawful assembly shall be imposed with the same punishment so by that rule whatever high court has given the decision that is wrong and here supreme court has pointed out here the trial court was correct this is also an important judgment so for decoity you can see how technically the things matter R.K. Dalmia v. Delhi Administration, 1821. This is an old case, but it's uh, discussing an important point here. So I've taken it up for conceptual understanding of the topic. It has been held that when one partner is given authority by the other partners to collect money or property of the firm, he is entrusted with dominion over that property, and if he dishonestly misappropriates it. then he comes under the scope of section 405 all of you have studied partnership act also you know about the concept of agency and all but uh, at that time when this judgment was given definitely we were not having that legislation it's 1821 but then we when we talk about the scope of section 405 that is something which we have to understand that in 405 this will be covered because whoever is in the position of authority that is in a position of trust in a position of authority will definitely be covered under this particular section that is section 405 criminal breach of trust so even partners are covered under this because they are entrusted with this authority they are having the concept of agency also no doubt If the person is collecting money or property on behalf of the firm is handling it then if he does anything he will be charged under section 405 and punished under section 406 of ipc criminal breach of trust criminal misappropriation of property ye dono areas mein kafi students ko confusion hota hai to aise case law se aapko kafi sari clarity aa jati hai ingredients ke upar so definitely reading judgments is a must for you to have a in depth knowledge of the subject especially if ipc the ingredients of the offense mohan versus state 1960 in this case the complainant entrusted some gold to the accused for being sold and the accused neither returned the gold nor the sale proceeds back to the complainant it was held that an offense under section 406 that is criminal breach of trust was committed now in this case there was a simple thing Compl complainant uh, gave him the gold and he did not uh, return it back nor did he uh, give the proceeds of that uh, sale after selling that gold whatever he might have received he did not do that so he also has committed criminal breach of trust over here so this is a simple transaction but what is the important element that the complainant entrusted some gold to the accused so when you are entrusting somebody with something or with some responsibility then criminal breach of trust will be attracted and offense will be deemed to be committed and punishment under section 406 will be given to that person so this way you have to cover all the topics for all the subjects especially from where judgments are asked in the examination it will give you a very good conceptual clarity once you start it you will enjoy reading judgments uh, let me tell you that agar aapne baki ke videos is series ke miss kar diye i would suggest all of you to go to the playlist of legal bee and check out all the videos of the series that i have started and also continue seeing the other videos don't forget to subscribe to legal bee have a good day everybody thank you